Hello, everyone. My name is Erica Johnsard. Welcome to Women's Entrepreneurship Week. I am a senior student at Minnesota State University, Mankato in the College of Business. I'm a marketing major with a innovation and entrepreneurship minor, and I am intrigued about a career in business, and I have a passion for learning, which is why I've joined the Entrepreneurship Club. And it gives me great opportunities like this one to meet um, successful entrepreneurs. Today, I'm talking to Maha Abulanin. Um, she is the she is a very successful global communications executive and entrepreneur. She started her career in communications and tech. At one point, Maha was Google's head of global communications and public <laughs> public policy. She left that to become an entrepreneur, and she currently is the founder and CEO of Digital and Savvy. Um, welcome, Maha, and thank you for meeting with me today and sharing your insights. Erica, thank you so much for having me, and I'm very excited about your journey and to learn more about how I can help you as you kind of take on your path. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just finishing my senior year, so I'm very much looking towards the future. Amazing. Um, I am guessing this just from what I've heard, but you were probably introduced to business at a very young age. Um, your parents were both entrepreneurs and your father eventually became the dean of the College of Business, what, when it used to be called Mankato State University. Um, so you probably hung around the college a lot. Did you have any idea while you were growing up um, and as a student at MSU that you someday wanted to start your own business? Yeah, actually, I did get the bug from kind of being around my dad. My dad was the dean of the College of Business, as you said. So I spent a lot of time on campus in his office when he graded papers. And then I ended up going to undergrad and graduate school at uh, University or Minnesota State University, Mankato. It's so hard to say now because it was Mankato State back then. But um, yeah, I mean, I didn't always know I wanted to be an entrepreneur, to be honest with you, but I did have that es essence of like the bug for like business and marketing and trying to be around how businesses are built, how businesses are grown. I, I did work at, at a couple of different companies, and then I did finally quit my job to become an entrepreneur, mostly because I wanted to control what I did every day, not because I had any idea how to run a company or run a business. Um, but it's been quite a journey next year. My company will be 20 years old. Uh, so I've been doing this entrepreneurship thing for 20 years and every year I'm learning something new and every year I'm still the same entrepreneur as if it's day one as a startup because the market changes so quickly, the environment changes so quickly. And so you got to know how to pivot and, and, and to really put your business in the right, uh, right foot so you can stay, stay successful and stay active in the market. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I know just from talking to entrepreneurs who have as much experience as you do, you've seen a lot of ups and downs throughout the years. Um, it's a tough business to own your own and have all that responsibility. Um, so you've had an incredible career yourself, as you were saying, just as a business executive working for other companies. But could you briefly explain what is Digital and Savvy? Yeah, so this is a strategic communications firm that I started to, its primary mission is to help people communicate better. So I do strategic communications campaigns for people, like how to build their personal brand, how a CEO of a company should represent him or herself online, in meetings, at speeches, with business executives, with partners, with their employees. And I also work with companies. So I would help a company develop the right way for them to build and protect their reputation. So I have a team of people, I'm a remote organization that I work with uh, around the US. I also have an office in Dubai and we are consultants pretty much uh, that help people figure out how to communicate better. And it can come from many things. It's not necessarily through the media. It could be through podcasts or speaking or events. So we help them find that message and narrative and then we help them execute it. Oh. That is such an important role that you play for those businesses and those people. I noticed you had on your website some very big businesses you work for, like Target, um, some big sports like NBA, USTA stood out to me. So I think that's so cool that you get to work with big companies like that. 
Yeah, right now we're working with the NBA Players Association Foundation. So this is the, so the NBA players have foundations because they want to have impact on the community and really scale what they're doing off the court. And so we help them figure out how the best way to engage the community uh, for issues like social and racial justice, uh, disaster relief, that type of thing. So we'll help work on communication strategies and programs uh, like that. Wow, that's so cool and so relevant. So that's awesome. Um, you mentioned that you have an office in Dubai as well. Yep. And I'm just curious what that's like having to navigate two very different locations across the world, different times. What What's your experience been with having two very different locations? That's such a good question. So I was living, I lived the first half of my life in the US and the second half of my life in, in the Middle East. And I just moved back to the States during the pandemic. And so I was working and doing business there and I'm 100% Egyptian. So I know the market and the region and the culture and the language. So I really believe that that's an exciting region that a lot of people are curious about. So when I moved back to the States during the pandemic, I'm like, I want to figure out a way once you know things open up for me to help people build businesses or communicate with people in the Middle East. And a lot of people are curious about Dubai or Egypt or Saudi Arabia. So I'm trying to figure out how I can build the most value for those people. So it's, um, I go there to the region quite a bit. I'm actually going there on Tuesday. <laughs> uh, uh, so I'm, I'm there in the region quite a bit. Um, one of the reasons why I kept my company there when I left during the pandemic was I just spent, you know, 23 years building my name and my equity and my brand and my relationships. And I just didn't want to walk away from them because it's a big part of my DNA. It's a big part of who I am. So it, it's challenging. Like I have to get up really early to do calls in Dubai. So it's like my starts my day quit pretty early, but it's also really rewarding because I feel like uh, I'm bringing value to book people in the U.S. and to people overseas. Yeah, you definitely bridge that gap and you are the perfect person to do that. I enjoy it. I actually really enjoy it. So cool. Um, I have yet to leave the United States. So I think that's so amazing. Um, I wanted to ask when you think back to when you were in college, maybe you were in my shoes at one point, um, what are some key skills or just advice you could give to uh, women entrepreneurs who are entering the business world? I think, in the, especially when you're graduating, like I want you to take a, like, this is an advice that I, somebody gave me and I wish I had it was just try different things, right? When you're younger, try different things to see what you like. So your first job out of college doesn't have to be your dream job. You just have to get in and, you know, and learn. So in, in your career, you will either be learning or earning. So in the beginning, I want you to learn as much as you can. So try different things, meet with a lot of people. It's a very entrepreneurial thing to do is to try different things and see what you like. Cause you don't know, like you don't know what it is that you're going to end up enjoy doing until you actually do it. And then when you get later on in your career and you have experience, you have expertise, you have perspective, you failed, you, you've had some challenges, then you can start thinking about the earning part. And I really would give that advice to anyone who's graduating or anyone who's on the entrepreneurial journey, try working for different types of companies, small companies, big companies, startups, established organizations, nonprofits, because unless you have that experience in trying different things, you really won't know where you're good or where you feel passionate about staying. Yeah. Wow. That is such valuable advice. I really appreciate it. Um, just knowing that you're going to have to learn so much and realize as you learn that there's more to know. Um, I think 100%. that'll just go on forever. So, and you also um, learn, like when you take a job, that's not a good fit. Like you're like, okay, I'm not good at that. Or that's not the right environment for me, or I can't work in that sort of structure. I need something else. Th even the things that you don't, you aren't happy with are teaching you lessons that you need to know. Oh, so true. Um, my last question is, what do you see as the future of business um, and the role that entrepreneurs are going to play in that? What do you I think it's going to continue. I think everyone's uh, less and less will be working for big corporates and are going to be more on the entrepreneurial side. I mean, look at the creator economy, uh, how anyone can, you know, create uh, income through the creative industry by creating content. I think there'll be a lot of opportunities for entrepreneurs. The market is big. 
the world is an abundant, uh, it's borderless now. So you don't have to worry about only doing things in your certain city or home state. You can actually through the internet, build a global business pretty quickly. I mean, I run my entire organization remotely. I have people in Vegas, Chicago, uh, Florida, uh, New York, uh, Los Angeles, Colorado, like D Dubai. So you don't have to be in any address. I think that'll continue. I also think that, um, you know, Things like AI that are coming into the scene are going to, you know, AI generated tools are going to help businesses be more efficient. So people need to, the creative process will never be something that uh, uh, AI uh, enabled act, uh, tool will be able to do. So I think that's going to leave a lot of space and room for creativity and ingenuity, which is super, super important. So I just feel like it's going to continue. I think people are growing up not wanting to be uh, employees, but want to be entrepreneurs. And there's a reason for it. You have more autonomy uh, and control over your day. You have more control over your careers. Uh, you really want to build values that are consistent with you because you don't want to work for a company that may not have the same values. So I think that conscious consumerism is, is also falling into the workplace as well. Yeah, that's such good insight because, I mean, we can already see how AI is taking over and it can be scary, but also yeah, it's going to leave room scary. for that creativity. So that's yeah. exciting. Um, I, I looked at your podcast and I think it's so amazing that you're able oh, to post it. Um, what was that like getting to that space? I'm sure you've had it for a few years now at this point, but yeah, you're able it, to kind of tap into that creativity, I'm sure. Yeah. So it's interesting, you know, a lot of people use their uh, personal platforms on social media to, you know, do storytelling, create videos. And, you know, I had never been comfortable being on videos and why am I the expert? And what am I going to sit and talk about? And I felt very comfortable doing audio. So I'm like, I love listening to podcasts. I don't have to worry about what my hair looks like or if I look bad or if I'm fat or I have a pimple. Like, I don't want to worry about my view. So I'll I'll do an audio because a podcast is something that's easy to consume. It's frictionless. You can do it anywhere, anytime. It's free. And it doesn't require production costs either. So I can also do it whenever I want. You just get a microphone, put it in your phone and start recording. So that's the premise on why I created the podcast because I wanted to do something I could also be consistent at in creating content. And now I'm about to launch season eight. We've been doing it. I've been interviewing in entrepreneurs and athletes and people from around the world. And it's it's a really fun process for me uh, to be able to interview people and tell their stories. Um, ultimately, as a communications person, I'm a storyteller. And so I really enjoy getting to tell other people's stories through this platform. And uh, I, I'm glad that you listened to it. And I, if you have any feedback, let me know so I can work on it. Yeah, I'm excited to listen to more. I'll add it to my regular rotation because I'm also a podcast person. So yay, I love that. <laughs> I always need the listeners. It's called Savvy Talk for anyone who's listening. <laughs> yeah, Savvy Talk. I'm going to be one of your regular listeners now. So amazing. Um, yeah, well, this was so, so great, Maha. I'm really grateful so that much. I got to talk with you. Um, and I have learned so much. I'm sure our listeners have learned so much as well. Um, and yeah, thank you for joining me today and being a example of a very successful woman entrepreneur. Erica, thank you so much. And I look forward to staying in touch and make sure that we connect with each other. And if you ever need anything, please reach out to me. Oh, thank you so much. Mama. I mean it. I mean it. <laughs> thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Yep, you too.